Hey, how's it going, everybody? My name is Avery, and today is Friday. That means it's day one of the Ray Tracing a One Weekend series. Um, this series is based on the book by Peter Shirley, of the same name. We're going to be following along with it and including a few other things to so creating our own simple Ray Tracer. By the end of this video, for day one, Friday, you're going to have this. You're going to be able to create a sphere, and it's going to be Ray Trace on the screen. It's going to be pretty basic, but you're going to see by the end of this weekend, we're going to be creating this. And this is just following along with the book. Um, in the book, whenever he wants to generate one of these images, he uses a PPM um, file, and it's similar to a PNG or a JPEG, so we're going to be using that for creating our images, except for we're also going to show you how to set up, um, how to display the image on an SDL uh, window and texture. If you guys aren't familiar with SDL2, we're not going to be covering up how to set up everything, but you guys can check out previous videos where we talk about that. But if you guys don't want to do that, if that seems a little too complicated, you can just follow along and we'll just do the PPM example as well. The book, there's several different iterations. For the most part, we're going to be following this one right here, version 1.54. And we're going to, I believe this is the newest one right here. It's a little, it's a little different, but it's pretty similar. We're going to be doing some stuff in this as well. For the first, um, for day one, we're... There's several chapters, but for the most part, it just there's 12 chapters um, for the actual ray tracing project. So we're only doing four chapters a day. I guess on here it's outlined a little bit different than this one, but we're gonna be doing creating an image, setting up our vector class, and setting up our ray class, and then drawing that red sphere as we showed before. So I'm gonna have all the code for this um, split up by the days, or I guess not by the days, but by the chapters that we're covering over. Um, so you guys can look at individual parts. And yeah, it's going to be on GitHub. I haven't created the repository yet, but that'll be in the description of this video, along with everything else that we're looking at. So jumping right into the code, I guess there's a few things we can do. Um, I'm just going to make a directory. Uh, we'll call it Ray, uh, Ray Tracer. And let's move into this directory. Um, I'm doing everything on here on Ubuntu, uh, Linux. So this is just in the terminal, but you guys you know, you can just do it from your file browser. Everything should work on Mac, Windows, and Linux, especially if you're just doing the PPM image. If you're using SDL2, you kind of have to set it up for yourself, but I'll cover some of that. And I've, as I mentioned, I cover that in other videos as well. In here, we'll be creating a file. Let's just go into that directory that we just made, and we'll call it main.cpp. And this will be the main file that we're using, and this is going to have our main function. As we go, we're going to be creating other headers um, that are going to be added into this file. So I guess all the SDL2 stuff, I guess we can quickly cover that right now for what you need in case you want to do SDL2. I'll copy over an old one that I have, random, okay, copy that here, let's just open that right here. So this is a header. I'm going to delete some of this stuff because we don't need all this. And then I'll quickly cover what we need for SDL2 for this project. But as I mentioned, if you don't have SDL2, that's OK. You don't need it for doing this ray tracer. But uh, because we're not doing all that, that's just the reason I'm just copying all this code in here in case you want to also later go in and copy all the code um, but basically we just have some stuff set for our window the render in the screen uh, the screen is going to be a texture and that's going to be drawing onto for no ray tracing and here's initializing some stuff it's initializing the window and screen and everything and then we have some functions for drawing individual points onto the texture and then we have a loop function that does all the rendering and the keyboard input so I'll have this, you guys can just go and copy it if you guys want to do the SDL2. Um, this SDL2 template, I've used it for some other projects. It's pretty useful in case you want to just drag and drop it into a project and do some sort of uh, display of some sort of, uh, any sort of project, I guess. But we'll go ahead and switch back to our main. In here, we want to include IO stream. And that's because we're going to want to print out some stuff. And we can include the SDL template. Dot H. And down here is going to be our main. Um, let's switch this to C. 
Yeah, okay, looks a little nicer. And in our main, we can set the width and the height of our image that we're gonna be creating. Let's go for 800 and the height. Let's go for 400, just like that. And now the beginning of our, um, when you want to create the ppm file you're going to want to have a little header at the beginning of that file so we're going to print that out and it's going to look just like this p3 in and then i'll have the width and a space and then the height and then we're just going to want to say for the color type um this image file type uses ascii for everything so that's just why we need to display all this like this okay so this is going to be basically the head of that file that we're printing out to so we're just going to run it out and then we're going to push all the output into the actual file itself so we don't need to actually manage opening and closing a file or saving anything in here and then we're going to have a for loop and in this for loop we're just going to loop through the height and the width so I'll do int y equals zero. Actually, no, i is going to equal to the height minus one. That's because for this PPM, we're gonna be drawing, I believe from uh, the bottom to the top um, because the image file is gonna be reversed compared to how we're gonna display it on the SDL too. But I'll show you that once we get to it. Until y is greater or equals to zero, and y minus minus. And then in here we can just do it in a regular order, just like this. So now we can actually go and loop through the whole entire image. And as we're looking through, that's when we're looking at all the pixels, and that's how we're going to be setting up, um, knowing where to draw. And I'll create some floats for the RGB, so we can figure out what colors to draw. And this float will be of X right here. This is just for an example, um, just so we can get something drawn onto the screen. And then float G will be Y, float height, Float B will be equal this right here. And then to make sure that they're the right numbers, we do this 255.99 times R int IG int 255.99 times G. And the sum, same thing will be done for B or blue. And now we can go ahead and display it. And let's do the red space, the green space, and then the blue. And then we'll print out a line. So this is everything for that. And we can quickly run this. Um, what's, what's, uh, so it's gonna be g++ main.cpp. We have the SDL2 stuff in it, but we're not using that yet. But I'll just compile it with it so there's no errors. And it ran like that. And I'll quickly run it just so you can see what it looks like. So it's going to look like something like that. Except for it looks like this right here didn't run. Let's take a quick look at that. So that needs to be this way. And now let's do that again. And I'm going to copy this into a script just to make it easier okay but every time I run this build it's just doing the same thing as this right here okay so now we can see right there it's printing out just all these colors that it's generating and we can output it by using this right here and we're gonna output it into this is chapter one so it'll be one ppm and there it is. Now you can open it. Um, you can open it in your file browser. So you'll be able to find it in here. And here's the image. And that's the image we created. 
So this is just for testing purposes, basically. This isn't ray tracing or anything yet, but that's what we're getting into. Um, now let's quickly set up the SDL2 stuff. So we want to do SDL, and then in here, what we can do is ray tracer, and width, and height. And then down here, we'll do while running. And then here we can do a loop. And that's just for rendering some stuff. So this is going to be SDL temp. Is it SDL or is it SDL template? SDL template, okay. I usually use namespace for this, but because you might not need it, um, this is just to make it easier for you to know which part's SDL and which part is not SDL. And we see here when we run it that, well, it's quickly going to print out everything. But in here in the SDL2 window, we displayed everything to the texture that's rendered to the screen. Um, if you want it to be a little bit faster, you can just not print that out. And here we can see it's there instantly. So let's compare this real quick to. Uh, Okay, so here's our image, and now let's just show you the SDL output real quick. And as you can see, it's flipped. And that's like I mentioned that same reason that we're doing this right here is that the PBM image is just gonna be a little bit different. So let's try to make it so this way is like this correctly. And to do that, we can just do height minus Y. And now let's just Build that real quick and run it, and it should be identical to the image. And here it is, it's identical to the image. So now let's set up everything that we need for our ray tracing now that we got the displaying and everything correct. This SDL template file, we're not going to need that anymore. Um, this is everything that we need for that. And this right here, we're going to be changing this because this is just you know, setting some random colors to draw onto the screen. So now we want to actually figure out the correct colors. And I guess you can see right here, but your file should look something like this. Uh, in case there's getting any sort of errors, your computer should have a way to view this PPM. If not, I'll probably have a link in the description for a PPM image viewer. And here I'm going to make some saves for everything. Uh, make directory for each chapter. Four. Okay. So now let's just copy the main into one. Let's copy that into one. Copy this into one as well. It's probably a quicker way for me to do this, but everything should be there as well. So this is when I push it all to the I make a Git repository for it all, so you guys can access the individual parts. So now we're gonna be doing into the second part, and that's gonna be actually setting up some more stuff for the vector class, which is probably the main part of this video. It's gonna be the vector class. So let's create a new file right here. We'll call it vec3.h, and because it's gonna be a 3D vector. And we'll do include math.h and include standardlib.h and include iostream. Okay. And we're creating our class. It's going to be called vec3. And in this class, we're going to define some functions, and then after them, we're actually going to. I guess define what the functions are. Um, for the most part, the functions, I guess, are just inline operations. Uh, so we're going to be doing operations for the vector class so we can do uh, math and stuff like that with our vectors. The vectors are going to be used for a 3D coordinate in space that we're going to be using for displaying and doing all the ray tracing stuff. And the vectors are also going to be used for the colors. So the red, green, blue is going to be a vector as well. We'll just create this empty one right here, and then right here we'll create another one that passes in some parameters. And the parameters will be 
Um, like I said, it's going to be either X, Y, and Z or red, green, and blue. Um, so we're just going to call them just the, this right here because, well, the name doesn't matter. <clears throat> and now down here, let's actually create this float E3. And here we'll just assign everything. So E0 equals E0. E1 equals E1 and E2 equals E2 as such. So then in here, let's list out um, some getters that we're going to be needing and also all the inline operation stuff. So inline float <coughs> x constant return E0. So this is just a, uh, no, oh my bad. I keep mistyping as I'm talking. <coughs> but this is just a getter for the X. And we're gonna do this for um, the Y and Z as well. Y, Z, and the red, green, and blue. Just to make it so the code's a little bit more readable when you're using it in other places. Okay, perfect. And then here is gonna do the bulk of this header file. Um, <clears throat> we're gonna need operators from the plus, the minus, the operators for um, a lot of other things as well. So let's just get started with that. Um, it's gonna be constant just to make sure that everything is being returned correctly. Back three, and then here's a reference, and then operator plus, then const return this. So inline vec3 operator minus const and it's going to be return vec3 minus e0 minus e1 and minus e2. <coughs> and then we're also I guess let's just keep going into them. Uh, the next one is going to be a float operator for the index, and it's going to take an integer and const, and then return ei. So that's just so we can get instead of calling this right here, or instead of calling one of these, if we wanted to, we can just do the integer. Um, in the index for it, exactly where it is. Then inline float, this is basically the same thing, but this is for the reference operator int1 const return ei. Then here's going to be some more math operators as well that we're needing. Um, we're not even going to use all these in this video, but we're going to use most of them throughout the next two videos. Um, so this one is going to be const vec3 and v2 is going to be the other one. And let's just copy this a few times. Um, this one right here is going to be minus. This one is times. This one is divided by. And then it's going to be another times. And this one's going to be another divided by. I guess we delete that one right here. So these ones are all going to remain the same, except for these ones down here is going to be by a number. So that one's going to be float t and float t. So just like that. And now after the class, we're going to go ahead and actually define all these functions just down here below. Um, and along with a few other functions. Will be inline std oh okay std i stream sorry about that um, the reference and operator std i stream back three and t return i is except for here Let's do i is is this right here uh, 
Okay, perfect. And then let's just copy this one for the next one. Here, I'm going to put some space down here. Except for this one is going to be the opposite. And just this right here is going to be the opposite as well. So this one's an output. So let's just call it as such. And this one's going to have these space breaks between them. And then inline void, vec3. This one is going to be make unit vector. Vector. And with here, we're just creating a function for creating the unit vector. We'll do float k equals 1 divided by the square root of e to 0 times e of 0 plus e of 1 times e of 1 plus e of 2 times e of 2 again. And now let's just return, or no, we're not returning it, we're setting every stuff. So it's going to be e of 0 times equals k e of 1 times equals k and e of 2 times equals k. So this you can already see that we're using some of the operators that we're setting up. And the next one, let's just set up all the operators. We just need to do the operators and then a cross and a product function. So inline vec3 operator plus con vec3 and it's going to have v1 on one side and the other side is going to have v2 v2 okay now let's just return that it's pretty simple to do we just need to do it for each individual the x y and z uh, so it's just going to be v1 e0 plus v2 e0 and then that'll be done for each one of them and um, it's kind of just a bunch of repetitive stuff that's just kind of why we're just going straight into it instead of actually talking about everything it's all pretty simple it's just kind of a lot of things that you need that's going to be the minus that's going to be the multiplication and that's going to be the division um, let's just, no, oh, now it's minus, multiplication, division. And then right here, you just change that to minus. Multiplication, and then division. And as we mentioned before, multiplication and division are also going to have one. That's just by a float. So let's just paste that on here. And then I guess, actually let's just do one at a time. So we can copy it easier. So the multiplication. And then this one is going to be by what's on this side. Let's do a, it's going to be float t. And then the side is just going to be the vector. So then right here it's going to be t vector. And it's going to be the same for all of these. Okay, and except that is the wrong sign. And then I guess I could have copied that better before. There it is. Those are all of our operator functions that we're needing. Um, I guess it's kind of a lot to type, but that's just something that you're going to have to do. Um, of course, all this code is going to be on the GitHub, so if you guys don't want to type all this, you can just go and copy it. And then the last two, there's going to be this dot function. Um, and that's for finding a dot product. And it will be const vec3 v1 and const vec3 v2. And 
that's going to be returning. Um, basically, I guess we did the dot product up here as well. Where did we do that? This right here. So let's just copy that. And we're just going to return it just like that. Except for that one's going to be v1, this one's going to be v2, v1, and v2. And then we'll have this cross function. Cross. This one's going to be const vec3, v1, const vec3, v2. And then here we're going to return a vec3, and this vec3 is going to do v1. I guess we can copy some of this, except we're going to alter it a little bit. Actually, which is it's going to make it a little confusing to alter everything. So I'll just do v1 e of one times v2 e of 2 and then here it's going to be e of 2 times v2 e of 1 and as for the first part we can copy these for second and third let's uh, put a break between them okay and then in here, I want to put this one in parentheses because we're making this one negative. And this first index is a zero. That one remains a two. And this one becomes a zero as well. This one's zero. This one's one. This one's one. This one's zero. And it's just like that. So that's the cross product. Let's go ahead and include this in our main file, include vec3.h. Let's build it. Okay, so we have some errors. So I'm just going to go through and just uh, show you guys some things that could be fixed. So line 19, this shouldn't have a const right there because this one right here is the const. Um, if not, that was going to be an overload. Okay. And we also need to set everything here public. And this right here needs to be now because this is the output one. Along with this right here also needs to be now. Uh, this is a typo. This should be void. This should be vec3. And this function right here wasn't declared. So let's just declare it right up top. Um, we'll just copy this. And let's clear it right, uh, I guess, here. No, it doesn't matter. And get rid of that. We can, there's a few more things actually that we can do down here. Um, just a few more operators. It's going to be effect three. Um, VEC three operator plus equals constant VEC three. B. And then in here, we're going to do E1 plus equals V of E0. Or I meant to say 0 for the other one. And let's just copy that. 1, 2. And let's do return of this. And we can do that. We can just copy that for the other ones. Right there. And then down here, we can do stuff for a a float as well, at least for the multiplication and the division. So let's copy that down here. And then in here, we'll just do float t 
This one will be float t as well. And that'll be by t. Just like that. We're going to make another variable for the vision one. Call it k. And then right here, it's going to be float float k equals 1, m, 1 divided by t. And one last thing, I believe, we'll do vec3 unit vector of vec3 v. And now it's going to return v over v dot length. That's vec3 in there. All these are that I copied wrong. And then up here, let's create that length function. We'll do inline float length. And this one can just be done right in here. But that's going to return um, square root of, I believe it's the dot, except for the dots of two of them, but we should be able to just copy this right here. And we also do the squared length. So that's going to be pretty simpler, or sim similar. Um, oh, I copied that totally wrong, didn't I? So that's going to be um, going to be this right here. That's going into the square. And this is length squared. And that's going to be just the non squared version, square root version of it. And then here we'll copy these, except just flip it around. Float t, float t, I guess having this multiplication one doesn't make a difference. Yeah, we'll get rid of this multiplication one actually. Okay, now that we've got this operator set up as well, everything should be good. And of course it's not going to be using it, but I'm just running that just because I guess. So now in our main class, we can actually set up some stuff now that we've included the VEC3. We're going to want to change this right here. And to do that, we can just do, so let's just create a vector color. And here it's going to be float i. Or here, this actually, it's using these same things. Vector color. This one could be like that. Of course, you can use the getters that we did as well. And let's see if that works. And it does. Uh, as you can see, it does the exact same thing. So now we're using the vec class for storing the information. Now that we have that, um, Let's copy the main into two, and we'll copy the vec into two as well. Now we're going to be setting up our ray class. And so I'll just make a new tab for that right already, and we're going to save that as ray.h. So let's talk about a little bit, now that we're actually in the ray tracing, um, how it's all going to work. Um, so vector, like we said, the vector is just, um, it's for our point of purpose, it's a 3D point that 
that could be used for the color or the point in space. And the ray itself is going to be a linear line. And the linear line is going to have an origin. So we're going to have to keep track of the origin. And it's going to have a direction. So we're going to have to keep track of the direction. And the direction will go in both places. And this is in the 3D space. And to figure out a point on this line, we're going to be using a function where it's going to be A plus T times B. That's the times. And so the function is just going to be P T. So T is going to be the given spot that we want to look for. And we're going to find out where that spot is on the line. And A itself is going to be the origin. And then B is going to be the direction. So that way when we give it T, we can find T for any direction based on the origin and the direction of it. So I guess just jumping into the code for that, we can um, create our class. And the class is going to include the array class. And, oh no, my bad. It's going to include the vector 3. And then here is going to be our array class. Let's just declare everything as public. And we'll just do this real quick. And then ray. Then here we can set up the stuff for the actual function, like we were just talking about. Vec3a const vec 3 B. So as I mentioned before, A is the origin, B is the direction. So we can actually get some getters so we can get this stuff. So let's get the origin. Let's return A. And to get the direction, let's return B. Of course, we still need to find this A and this B. Uh, we can just find that real quick. Back three A B, and let's just have that down here. And then right here we'll have back three point at point at parameter, and this is going to be the function that we just drew. This right here. So the function is taking in the t, and it's going to turn a constant. And it's going to be return a plus t times b. And now that we've did up all of our operators in the back three class, this should work perfectly. Let's just build that, and there's no errors. Okay. So this is the main part of the ray class. At least it's getting the origin and the direction, and then you can figure out a point on that line or on that ray. If you guys have done any sort of linear algebra, maybe this will be a little bit easier to understand. So now that we have this ray, we want to be able to have our camera. The camera, basically this imagine, this is the camera, or even better, imagine your eyeball. And then here's the screen. And we want to figure out where to draw onto this screen. And so the screen is going to be the texture or that PPM file that we're drawing. So to do that, there's a few things we want to figure out. We're going to want to figure out the size of that right there. And we're also going to want to know where the lower left corner is. Because based on this, I mean, we can do it from any corner, but we're going to do it from the lower left corner because in that way we'll be able to figure out all the other corners using that. So you want the horizontal size, the vertical size, the lower left corner, and the origin. The origin is going to be here. Usually that's just 0, 0, and 0. That's just a simple way of doing it. And let's say that this lower left corner could be negative 2, negative 1, negative 1. So it's just offset a little bit. And then the vertical, you know, it's direction going up. Um, that size is going to be, according to our aspect ratio, uh, it's going to be 2, or it's going to be 4. So that's going to be, no, my bad, that's 2. Uh, 4 is for the width or the horizontal. So this one is going to be 2, 1, negative 1. And this one's 2, negative 1, negative 1. So as you can see here from this difference, 
there's a four, and here from this difference, there's a two. And that's already the aspect of our window. Um, that's the same thing as uh, four and two, except we're just making it a little bit bigger. But that's exactly what we're going for, just like this. So now that we know this, we're gonna to want to go into our class and set this position, set this position and set the width and the height, or in other words, the vertical and the horizontal. So now in here, we can just change that to array.h. And I guess now that I'm thinking about it, we didn't build it with that, did we? Okay, well, there, it works perfectly fine. We're gonna be creating a function for the color so we can generate what color needs to be drawn. And we'll get to that in a second. But before we do that, let's define some of those things we just talked about. Vec3, lower left corner. And that's just gonna be exactly how we showed it. Negative 1.0. And then the Vec3 vertical and horizontal. So we'll do horizontal right here. And the horizontal, that's going to be the four distance and the other ones are gonna be zero. And then the vertical is gonna be a two distance. Vertical, except it's on a different asp axis. So it's gonna be on this one right here. And then we can have our origin. Origin, and that's just gonna be zero, zero for everything. And now down here, I guess this figure out what we're gonna draw. We're gonna wanna draw something right here, for example. So we're gonna have to figure out the size based on this right here. And we're calling that the U and V. So that U and that's the V, that's the distance. So we're gonna wanna calculate the U and V based on this and this, and knowing the vertical so we can figure out the exact aspect of what needs to be drawn onto. So, to do that, we can actually, let's just comment this out right here. And right here, we'll do float to u, and that's gonna be equal to um, float of x divided by the width. And then, that needs closed off. And the same thing will be done right here for the height. And I guess you'll see for our output how this is going to work. And then we're going to create an array. And so now basically we're looking from our origin and we're looking out into the scene, basically. So we're going to look from our origin. And so just for you to remember, the array is going to get the origin of the array and its direction. So the direction is going to be starting off from the lower left corner Like we mentioned here, we start off from here, and then we use the U and V along with the aspects to figure out where it's going to be. So that's just going to be the lower left corner plus U times the horizontal and plus V times the vertical. And that should be enough to figure out where on the screen it's gonna draw. So it's gonna basically look down here and look up here. And that's how it's gonna do it. And now we wanna actually figure out the color based on that. So I'll do vec3 color, and this is gonna be color R. So we can get rid of this one right here. And up here, we can actually define that. So that's gonna take an array, just like that. And now let's calculate the color based on that array. So it's gonna be unit direction equals unit vector r dot direction. And then float t equals 1.5 times, let's close that off, but unit direction dot y plus zero. 
And now let's return one minus t times vec three of one, just like that. And we're gonna see that just by doing this, it's gonna create somewhat of a, a sky-like background. That's gonna be the main background for our scene. Okay, let's just make sure that these can be used. Just a redeclaration of F. Okay, so that's a V. And let's output this on to three. We didn't do one for two, but it's gonna output it. And here we can see that is the sky. And we can also see in the image. There it is, that's our sky. So this is using ray tracing. Um, this is different than the last image that we created. It wasn't as random colors. We have our origin. It's looping through, starting down here from the left corner, and it's going through everything and just ray tracing it. And we're using this function up here just to say, based on that direction, that's the color that it should be. And it's as simple as that. So let's go ahead and copy that into three. And we'll, we'll move three into three as well. And we'll copy the ray into three and copy the vec into three. Was that copied in the two as well? Yeah, because the vec's in two, perfect. So now that we've got our sky, let's go ahead and let's add a sphere into that sky basically. And, but now that we've already got all this set up, it's gonna be pretty easy. But let's imagine for drawing our sphere, we're not just gonna tell the computer to draw a circle. We're gonna have a circle in here with its center of the circle and with the size of the circle. So every time the ray crosses through or from the origin, the ray is gonna cross through and we're gonna detect if it crosses through the circle. So if it doesn't cross through the circle, it's just gonna draw the background as normal. And if it crosses through the circle, it's going to decide to draw the circle there. So we're gonna do that um, right here. And to do that, we can also, another thing that's talked about in the book is so let's say this is our circle. We have a ray that crosses through here, a ray that crosses through here and through here. Um, as you can see, this one crosses through twice, this one through once, and this one never crosses through. Um, these are called roots. Um, for this instance at least. And so we're gonna be trying to figure out how many times, uh, we're gonna try to figure out if the ray is crossing through the circle or not, basically. And to do that, we're just gonna be creating a function in here for right now. In a later video, we're gonna move it, but it's gonna be, because we're gonna change up some of this stuff, but hit sphere, which we'll is see if the sphere has been hit. So let's just do const vec3 center. So that's gonna be the center of the sphere. Float radius, it's gonna be the radius. And then this is the ray that we're checking to see if it has crossed through the sphere or hit it or not. So back three, OC equals R dot origin minus the center. So we're just offsetting a little bit, so it's correct. And then A is going to be a dot of R dot direction and also r dot direction. Float b is equals to two times the dot of oc in r direction. And float c is going to be equal to dot of oc and oc minus radius times radius. And this is basically just calculating everything for the sphere. And we can do discriminant equals B times B minus four times A times C. And now we're just gonna return if it's crossing through it or not. Discriminant is greater than zero. Uh, so I believe this discriminant is basically just um, kind of what we talked about, the roots. 
And now in this color, we're gonna to wanna to actually check to see what's hidden in the sphere to change the color. So let's just do right here, if hit sphere, and we'll call this one sphere right here. And we'll call this one sphere uh, radius. That will create in a second, and that's the ray. And this one's gonna return, and we're just gonna return red. So our sphere is going to be red. So we can call, let's do vec3 sphere right here and float sphere radius. And we can just assign that right up here. Of course, you could just have this up here as well, but um, let's just assign it here so you can understand a little better and test it around and try different sizes basically. If it's sphere radius, it's going to equal to 1.5, and here it's going to be 0, 0, and then negative 1. So 0, 0 is negative 1, that should put it at the same x and y as our i, so it should be straight out here, and then it's pushed back negative 1 on the y. Um, so you can kind of imagine that's the y, that's the x, and this is the z. So it's push back on the z. Actually, but this right here is supposed to be equal to vec3. So this if needs that, of course. And looks like there's a few other things we might have missed. Uh, line 19. That needs to be closed off. And this one right here needs parentheses. Now let's run it. And here we can see we generate our circle. So it works exactly as we talked about it. So anywhere that's not touched in the circle, it just continues and draws the sky. And if it's in that circle, if it hit sphere function says so, it's just going to return red. So this is everything for this video. As I mentioned, everything's going to be on the GitHub repository. It's in the links. Basically, everything we talked about is going to be linked. If you guys want to do the SDL2, um, just copy that header and make sure you guys have SDL2 set up correctly for you. And it's as simple as that. You guys can do the PPM as well. And in the next video, we're going to be doing a little bit more to the sphere. As you can see, it's just a red sphere. There's no... Uh, sort of lighting or shading or anything or material type or anything to it. So we're going to be moving on. But this is basically the basics of ray tracing. Uh, from here we want to set up some other material types and for that we're using reflections. So the ray is going to be able to bounce off of that and bounce onto something else. And that's going to be something we're going to be talking about in the next day. This is day one of ray tracing. Um, in one weekend, if you guys have any questions, leave in the comment section below. If you enjoyed today's video, uh, please leave it a like if you're new to the channel. Feel free to check it out. Um, I have similar videos to this and um, other game programming type stuff. And can't wait to see you guys again tomorrow. Thanks. Bye.